I'm on a journey to get better, and I want to do it with you. And I'm not just focusing on physical health. I'm focusing on everything, emotional wellness, spirituality, finances, relationships, and so much more. Every week, it will be my personal goal to bring us, the world's leading healers, experts, and game changers, to share groundbreaking secrets and tips to getting better in all areas of life. Getting better isn't easy, but it's a whole lot easier when we can do it together. Welcome to Better Together with me, Maria Menudos. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. If you don't watch us on YouTube, you, you could get a good laugh because <laughs> we start out doing crazy, stupid interpretive dances, and uh, it could be just the thing that lights you up in the morning. <laughs> Could be worth your while, (laughs) trust me. (laughs) Do you cut back and forth, Stephen? Are you showing yourself? Because we've talked about this. Yeah, sometimes. Just want to make sure you're remembering, because if I go to YouTube and I don't see you. Well, right now, today, you won't see any of us. Oh, so you forgot. I forgot. Okay, so you've left me hanging, so I look like the only moron dancing. That's not nice. Well, none of us, none of us are seen today. Oh. Yeah. We got slated. Yeah. It's to give you a moment before. Wait, so we're not filming this for YouTube right now? We're we're, we're filming this, but yeah. we don't film the dances because that's that's to get us amped before we go on it. So people can't see us dancing? No. Oh. Did you want people? I mean, we, we discussed like sometimes cutting forth, but I didn't know if you wanted like just like to have us. <gasps> what do you think I'm doing this for my health? I'm yeah. trying to make people laugh. <laughs> no, I'm trying to get I'm us performing. Amped. I was performing. <laughs> oh, speaking man. Speaking of, uh, uh, before we get to speaking of, <laughs> our quote of the day comes from our guest today. A person who sees a problem is a human being. A person who finds a solution is a visionary, and the person who goes out and does something about it is an entrepreneur. That is Naveen Jane, and bam. I mean, if it isn't clearer than that, I don't, I don't know what could be clearer, basically. I know. I read that, and, and after researching him, I'm like, oh, that's kind of your bio, but also the way I want to live my life. I mean, Thank it's you. pretty pretty <laughs> right on. Uh Naveen Jain is somebody that I met at a Bulletproof event with Dave Asprey, and I was so blown away by him, and I loved his energy, and he told me about this thing called Viome that was going to change people's lives and and help people, and and it was just overwhelmingly amazing. And of course, if you've been listening to the show or watching us on YouTube, not dancing, uh, you would know that... Um, <laughs> <laughs> you would know that I have been using Viome and I've been really, really impressed by it. So we finally have him on the show today. I'm really excited. Uh, before we get to that, uh, I just want to say thank you for joining us here every Monday. We are grateful for the community that we've been building. We're grateful for all the comments that you guys leave us, the emails you send. As I always say, and I mean it, it lights us up and it keeps us going and it inspires us to keep getting better and finding more people that are going to enrich our lives and and help us get better in every way. We have also started a Patreon and I can see you guys are slowly trickling over and I'm so grateful because we really want to make this a completely ad-free space. And so um, if you guys can jump on over to patreon.com backslash better together with Maria and join us. Um, We're going to be doing a lot of really cool stuff together and you get a lot of different fun things. I mean, you could have one of these awesome mugs and they are really actually cool. They are. It reminds you that you know better. If you know better, you get better. And we have tons of different tiers for people. So like for five bucks, you get the after shows and you get like access to the discord where you can talk to all of us. Uh, for ten, you get the you get the after shows, and you get like our an extra episode every week, like a full extra episode, which is our Patreon episode. Mm-hmm. And then at twenty five, we have uh, quarterly Q and As with Maria. They're like live, and you also get a Discord channel that's straight to Maria's inbox. So it's it's pretty fun. The extra really episode, cool. the yeah. after show. So we're giving you stuff for it. But at the same time, you know, the thing I've always liked about Patreon that Kevin always told me about because. I got to podcasting later in life. Kevin was like right on it. I mean, Kevin was maybe the father of it. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, After Buzz is the first in so many things. Yeah. And podcasting at that level for sure. Yeah. So After Buzz, our digital broadcast network that produces after shows for like every TV show, Kevin came to me and was like, hey, I I really want to do like a podcast about our favorite shows, like at the time Breaking Bad and Jersey Shore. 
<clears throat> I allowed the rolling of the eyes there. And so uh, I was like, okay, I don't know what a podcast is. He's like, but this is the future. And I was like, well, you are a visionary. Boom. Uh, so I trust you and I'm in. Let's do it. And so at through the years, as I've watched the people he has listened to on Patreon, um, the different talk show hosts, they've been able to build their Patreons and be completely independent. <clears throat> and that's really the dream, right? Because if you know anything about, you know, the industry, it's, it can be quite stifling guys. I can tell you from firsthand experience, you go in with this like amazing idea that you know is going to help people. And they're like, no. And you're like, Whoa. with so many, so many of the things you hear on TV are because of a partnership based on money. Yeah. And so a lot of it's not like Viom is just Maria being purely curious, wanting to get better, wanting to feel better. And having tried it and really seen results. Yeah. And then we bring this guy who's gonna be so cool. I'm so excited for mm -hmm. him. But so it's that sort of independence is exactly where and the only way a health show I think should be made. Absolutely. It's scary if it's not. Really. Absolutely. Well, I think what's cool is for me, even with my books, I never took money from anybody to mention any products. I always genuinely want to give you the truth because I, I know with magazines and all these things, everyone's just selling you stuff that they're either getting for free or um, have a deal and it's an advertising thing. And so it's kind of frustrating when I see it because I see women and men, but I see women run out and buy all the things that they say and it's not genuine. And so anyhow, the, the bigger part of this is I was always moved by the fact that people supported these shows and with our show, you know, an interview like with Bose the other day, I had a whole plan on what we were going to do, right? If I was working, you know, for someone, they would have wanted me to stick to those questions. And because this is my own thing, my own ship, I got to have a really engaging, amazing conversation with her that was probably way better than what we had planned. I'm still living off of it. <laughs> Let me be clear yeah. about that, Maria. I'm still, that I was, know. and the same with you and Gabby Bernstein. I just think it's just such a better conversation when there's, you're not handcuffed to things. Yeah. Freedom. And so you guys are supporting that and um, you're helping us and you're helping us build and grow to give you what you want. So it's like it's independence on both sides. You're controlling the content in a sense by supporting it and then letting us know what you want. So when you want an episode, we're working on it. True. So anyhow, so we're really grateful and we hope you all join the Patreon account um, and yeah, so that's that. I know Steven just got our guest in. Is he here? He is here. Okay, very but good. Also, <laughs> but also, there's some stuff we got to talk about, guys. <laughs> First of all, have I told you how much I love my dogs? Oh, my God. No. Okay. No, no, no. We won't go there. No, but I love Maria them so Maria seriously, much. seriously asked today that she didn't know that she loved her dogs more than the average dog owner. <laughs> and I was amazed because usually you're pretty self-aware. <laughs> that was yeah. a complete lack of self-awareness. Guys, I mean, like, I thought that everybody speaks and squishes them literally all day long, like every second they can. Like I am scotch taped to them as much as possible. <laughs> Yeah, no, they love. I love my dogs, and I see them like I've never seen them before. Exactly. Every single time, I am a dog. Actually, <laughs> think about it. A dog. When you come home, that's a sound. If bite, you Steven. leave, <laughs> if you leave and you come back five minutes later, they treat you like they just they haven't seen you in a year, right? But you just left five minutes ago. I'm the dog that treats my dogs like that, where I'm like, we're back. I missed you. You were gone for three seconds. Okay. I love them I'm so much. I'm obsessed with that. And sometimes I do. I want to squeeze them so hard. I love them so much. So Steph was basically saying like, uh, hello, yes, kids are going to be amazing for you. But I was yeah. like, it was almost like I've been waiting for the sign because I've been waiting to fund my account. I, have, I still haven't funded it. I got everything in. And... Um, yeah, anyhow, so, okay, 
All right, yeah. I'll have some scums. Seriously. <laughs> You'd have the cutest little scams. Even Trevor Moad said at our ABTV summit that you what guys are the best. He's like, and thank you for being the best looking couple. Like, c- we can't just lose out on these jeans, you know? Uh, you never know. <laughs> they could backfire. Can you imagine everyone's expecting, like, beautiful kids, and they're just not? <laughs> They'll be beautiful in my eyes, They'll no matter be creative. what. But <laughs> Steph's going to be looking to Steven and be like, damn, maybe we should have told her not I to. I shouldn't have said anything, Steven. When does yeah. their fur grow in? Actually, Kevin's mom, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I would be saying. Oh, when the fur grows in, they'll look much better. Kevin's mom actually said that to him. Yeah, you guys are gonna have ugly kids. Good looking people. They always have ugly what? kids. And Kevin's like, What? No, look at my parents. Yeah. Exactly. I don't know if that's the best example. Oh my <laughs> Steven. God. No, I'm confident no. in their looks. No, but I have to say, okay, so switching gears to what I really was gonna talk about. This is what I've been waiting for. So <laughs> my partners in the health show who have become like my girlfriends at the same time. I love them so much so and I have cool. so much fun with them. And I feel so lucky to be partnered with strong amazing talented smart women for this health show that we're kind of building and and developing and we've partnered with mark burnett and um some cool stuff's coming up but anywho uh last minute they asked me they said hey we're gonna go see madonna at the wiltern do you want to come and i was like uh uh yeah and then they're like it's at 10 30 and i'm like oh hell no so then i asked kevin i go kevin I have such a crazy day. I'm like, I'm going to have to like plan naps in. Like, I, I don't know if I can do this and I don't want to get sick before we fly with my mom and all this stuff, whatever. And so, um, FYI, we're pre-taping this show. So it's a little out of, out of, you know, date, but, um, by the time you listen to this, I will have already flown with my mom, but that's just me being (laughs) real with you guys. Uh, but the story is still important. So anyway, I just don't want you thinking, Oh, I thought she flew with her mom a month ago. I think, I think everyone at this point is just thinking you were going to not go to Madonna. Yeah. 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 No, I'm a loser like that sometimes. Like I just, I'm like, oh God, I have to drive, and then I have to go uh, back. What did Kevin Madonna. tell you? Because this <laughs> Kevin was like, go. So then, what a guy! I, I loved Kevin's response because I was in the trailer when you called him, and he said, if you get sick, the best place to be sick is back home in front of the TV, and like, because you're going to be on vacation, yeah. you're going to be back home. I'm like, you know, what? that's a great point. Yeah, no, that was probably the tenth time I asked him because I just kept waiting for him to say, no, honey, you should stay home and sleep. I don't know why I have such a problem going out. It really like takes so much out of me. And so, <laughs> and so but it's Madonna. <laughs> yeah, so, I was going to say. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. And then I kept trying to cancel. In my head, every time I have plans, I'm constantly figuring out how I can cancel them. And I know I'm not alone. No, I see that's Steven relatable. shaking his head. Uh, no, 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 like nodding my head. Const- no, I know. I felt it. So I'm constantly figuring out how do I get out of this? How do I cancel it so I can just stay home? But then I'm always just staying home and like I have no social life ever. Not ever. I don't want to be extreme, but really like I don't get to see my friends and spend time and stuff like that very often. So anyway, um, I went to dance class. I worked with this um, uh, incredible choreographer, Nick, who choreographs for a lot of the Dancing with the Stars people. And we put together our showcase piece, our tango piece. And I'm doing these like back bends, And all of a sudden I'm feeling everything hurting. And I'm like, oh boy, I'm not going to go. I get home, Violetta our housekeeper. I'm like, Violetta. So I got this invite to Madonna and she's like, yeah. And I go, I don't know. I'm really tired. And she's like, Maria, you, you know, you've been busy. Go, you've been taking care of your mom, blah, blah, blah. Good and job, so Violetta. I got in the car, I went and I'm going to tell you everything just worked smoothly. The parking was right next to the building. I didn't have to like feel unsafe because I hate nighttime and like Hollywood and all of that stuff. And so I was able to park like a few steps away and, um, and then her show was unbelievable. All I kept thinking about was my cousin, Nikki and my cousin Elaine, because they, they were old enough to be like allowed to watch Madonna. Let's say like I was still younger, but I looked up to them because they were like, it was, she was their person. Like she would wear, they would wear like the, the rubber bracelets and all this stuff. And, you know, they were in their teenage years and I was just like, oh, and so, um, 
anyhow, but I always loved her. And I remember when we used to clean nightclubs in Boston, there was a jukebox in the main club, the channel. And, um, I used to play material girl because I was like Ugh, cleaning dirty ass, sock. nasty floors, vomit, cockroaches, rats. And I just needed the escape. And so I would find coins on the floor and I would put it in and watch Madonna in that pink dress and perform material girl. And it was everything for me. It was like, I had hope and Ugh, that's such a cool story. Yeah. And so then when I did dancing with the stars, they asked for like your most memorable thing or whatever. And I was like that. And so I danced to material girl and it's pretty epic dance. Wait, I love that. Mm -hmm. It is. That's so cool. You yeah. should be that for Halloween. Yeah, she helped me like dream. And so Oh my god, I love that so much. Yeah. And so anyhow, before I left the house, I was I went up and like tucked my parents into bed. And I told them what I was doing. And my dad goes, oh, Maria, make sure you say hi to Madonna from me. Tell her, I, you know, I couldn't come. I was a little <laughs> tired. So I, I start <laughs> laughing. And he does this all the time. If I'm going to some big famous person's house or whatever, he always pretends like they know each other or whatever. Yeah, so pretends. I, yeah, well, some <laughs> of them he does know. So I turn on the camera and my mom's laying down. And poor thing, she still has her bruises on her face and she's got her op tune on her little bald head and, you know, she's just in bed. And I go, what did you say, dad? And he re-says it. And then I go, you know, tell her, you know, that, you know, we can't come, whatever. And I go, tell who? My mom goes, Madonna. <laughs> and I go, I go, well, what do you want Madonna to know, guys? <laughs> we love her, my mom says. And I was like, oh. So he sent it to my friends and they're sending it to her manager. I just thought it was the cutest thing. We, yeah. Ugh, so it was pretty that's funny. That's so cute. Yeah, it was. Okay, but back to the show. <laughs> Holy moly. Madonna. So I didn't know this, but Madonna moved to Portugal um, because her son. So she adopted like six other kids from Malawi. So she's got like eight kids. Um, and I hope I got that right, but I'm pretty sure I do. And so... One of them she wanted with the top soccer coach in the world. So they went to Portugal and she was like bored and lonely. And her kid was like, you need to, you know, get out and, and go do something. So she went to this, I think it's called a fava or something. It's like those clubs in Portugal. It was like a, it's almost like a flamenco thing. And it inspired her so much. So the show was like this beautiful art piece, like almost like think of like a one woman show but musical and play and so creative, like so friggin' creative that like it inspired me creatively. You know, she's got her political messages in there and stuff like that. And you watch this 60, what, 61 year old. She's in better shape than I ever have been. 61. Yeah. She speaks and sounds like she's 30 and what blew me away as I sat there was, you know, you have so many pop icons. And to me, I, I'm, I may be forgetting somebody, but to me, it's Michael Jackson, Madonna, and Britney Spears. That's like the Holy Trinity to me. Like, I don't think there are any bigger pop stars. I think for sure Michael Jackson and Madonna in terms of they opened up everything for female and male artists at the time. Like they were the ones who were like, we weren't allowed to do this and we're just creating mm -hmm. stuff. And everyone else took from them. Like mm -hmm. the Chris Browns and stuff took from, yeah. like they wouldn't exist without them. Um, Britney Spears, I think in terms of fans, yeah. But in terms of just innovation it, them too for sure queen queen set the stage pretty well too their oh, music yeah. videos were super controversial well, no, 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 i'm not getting into bands stars. Okay. i'm just saying like individual star icons and then obviously now we have like a beyonce and but like it's it's crazy but here's the thing that i'm blown away by so jealous the thing i'm blown away by is she somehow was able to keep a good head on her shoulders stay away from all the pitfalls of stardom, raised a family, did incredible. I mean, she really, from everything I was hearing from insiders, the amazing things she did in Africa and the schools and the hospitals she built and all of these things, um, she's been able to 
be this huge, huger than huge star and keep it together. And I can't name when you look at, you know, the top people, the Whitney Houston's like everybody, it's so almost yeah. impossible. Like Beyonce obviously is another example of that, but Beyonce is a different generation mm-hmm. too. So like for the people that pioneered it to be able, you know, for her to have pioneered this in a sense, I don't know. I just no, think I it's think so that's fascinating. And I don't think anyone has given her that credit. Yeah. I think, I think that's a, an awesome point actually. And I think it might be because her music and her is in, based in a seduction and she did break boundaries in terms of a lot of her lyrics were really promiscuous for what mm-hmm. women were expected of back then. So I think that you don't look at her and think philanthropist, you think rule breaker, yeah. but that's such a good point. I mean, that you should do an interview with her. And I get know. That angle. Well, I was so, so inspired uh, by that kind of take that I had yesterday. Cause I was like, wait, I don't think anyone's really done That's that awesome. or given her that credit. So we are now going to effort an interview. Yes. With her. Madonna, we're coming for you. And we have some, we have some, uh, some ends there. And I think it's really important <laughs> to show where her mindset was, how she did that, because it is, I, I, I don't, I give her so much credit. Anyhow, six kids, is, by the way, listeners, six, six total. Kids, yes. Oh, okay. I thought it was six. She rest, she adopted. And then the two, um, that she had with guy, but anyway, so six kids anyhow, uh, and p- moved to Portugal to be a soccer mom. I mean, <laughs> Madonna. So anyhow, that's that. Uh, I just wanted to share that, but it, it, if she does this anywhere else, it was so intimate. It was so beautiful. It was so unbelievably creative and cool. Um, I just wanted everyone that I knew to be there. It was like, almost like the Bible like when she's singing her, her hits, you're just like they're anthems like they're 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 a part of our 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 bodies like it's it's ingrained in our bodies because we grew up singing that it's crazy like things i sing in choir it's the same kind of thing in a weird way different obviously yeah. but it was no, so no i know exactly what you mean it was Music's so magical. crazy I'm yeah. so glad you did that. You yeah. deserve that. Yeah, I was really glad I did too. And um, I, know I got a late night text from you. I'm like, she is never up this late. She must have gone yeah. to Madonna. I definitely got my naps in though. <laughs> half, uh, a, half a life is showing up. Half a life is showing up. And um, yeah. So anyhow, that was uh, that was my my evening and I wanted to share. And if she happens to come anywhere near you, it is so worth it. Um, and Kim Kardashian was there, by the way. Oh, really? Oh, she loves Madonna. Yeah. She's yeah. done a good Halloween look. Yeah. Um, so anyhow, let's get to our interview. So Naveen Jain is an Indian born entrepreneur and philanthropist who knows no limits people at all. He's driven to solve the world's biggest challenges through innovation. He's the founder of several successful companies, including Infospace, Blue Dot, Viome, of course, Talent Wise and Moon Express. Today, we're talking to him about Viome, the mission-driven company aiming to improve people's health based on individual biology. Now, as you know, I've been talking about this company for a while, and we're excited to bring you the information. It's already helped me a ton, and I think I'm going to get some further clarification today on some things that I wasn't sure of. So if you're using it and you're having the same questions, it'll help you. We're also going to talk to him a little bit about his entrepreneurial background and tips for innovating and executing these ideas, because as his quote said, a person who sees a problem as a human being, a person who finds a solution is a visionary. So I'm in situations sometimes where I find a solution, but then you're like, well, how do I get this done? So the person who goes out and does something about it is an entrepreneur. So without further ado, let's chat with Naveen. Naveen, oh. we're back. So thanks for joining. I'm just so looking forward to it. Welcome to our world. Well, tell you what, this is the world I want to live in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We are better together. This is true. Um, and I am better since I met you and did Viome. And so I want to know, I want to know a lot, but let's start with why you started Viome and what it is for people who don't know. Why um, today we do the gut microbiome test, but that's not who we are. That's a means to an end. The reason we started Wyom was fundamentally, I believe that human suffering must end. 
our medical industrial complex today is designed uh, to keep people sick because everyone in the system makes money when you're sick and no one makes the money when you're healthy. In fact, the chronic diseases to a medical industrial complex is really like a lifetime subscriber. Once they figure out someone has obesity, diabetes, depression, or pick a name you want, um, they think now they have a lifetime subscriber. They won't let them die because their credit card won't work and they would never let them live with a cure, right? So to me, it was just such a sad commentary on who we are as humans. And what occurred to me is that the more money we are spending on healthcare, people are getting sicker and sicker. Our healthcare system, actually when it started, it was designed for fundamental purpose of getting rid of these communicable infectious diseases because we were dying from infections. And we do an amazing job of that. But what's really happening as a byproduct of the things that we did to get rid of this infection, such as antibiotics, and, and we can go through all that, Today, we are living in a world where almost every one of us is suffering from one or many chronic diseases. There is no reason for us as humans to ever develop chronic diseases. The reason is we develop these chronic diseases is because our ecosystem that we call human beings is really being disturbed by many things, you know, obviously the how we grow food, the food we put in our body, the air we breathe. We live in these concrete jungles rather than being next to animals and farms and um, in nature. And all of that has fundamentally changed who we are as humans. So the, I started this company with a simple purpose. What if together we can create a world where being sick is purely a matter of choice, not a matter of bad luck. And I believe that we can be better together when humanity comes together to really decide enough is enough. We are going to find a solution to our common suffering. We all know someone who is suffering from one of the disease. And we can get into it. I mean, one of the, another motivation for me was, I started this company three years ago. And then I saw, I unfortunately had my dad develop a pancreatic cancer. And I took a deep breath and wanted to understand what is really going on here. And it turns out the more research I did, the more I understood that these, especially the pancreatic cancer, just like many other cancers, really comes from imbalance in our micro, microbiome in our gut that how these uh, microbes from the gut move through the bile duct, go into pancreas, reduce the, basically modulate the immune system down and allow the cancer to grow. And one of the professors at NYU decided that if that's what's happening, why can't they just inject the antimicrobial into pancreas? And they did that, kill these microbes, and the immune system killed the cancer. I'm holding this research in my hand. I go to my dad's doctor and say, look, I think we know what causes this pancreatic cancer. I want you to inject this antimicrobial in my dad's pancreas. And he said, that's not the protocol. We will never do that. And I'm saying, look, it is a research right here. I'm, we are giving you permission. My dad is giving you permission. We want you to do that. He said, I won't do that. And I saw my dad die. And I said, you know, to my dad, and I said, look, dad, I can't save you. Um, uh, but I'll promise you that I'm never going to ever allow myself to rest until we solve all the chronic diseases, not just pancreatic cancer. Because there's no reason for us to have obesity or diabetes or autoimmune disease or depression. It, you know, you don't have to take my word for it. What's really amazing, Maria, is that today we can go to Google, type the, you know, depression and microbiome. It's clear that our gut is connected to our brain through the vagus nerve. Mm -hmm. And just because we call that a vagus nerve doesn't mean what happens in the gut is going to stay in the gut. Actually, what happens in the gut goes everywhere. It causes depression, anxiety, ADHD. In fact, now they're talking about Alzheimer, autism, and, pen and, and Parkinson's disease really connected to our gut. You look at metabolic diseases. You know, you talk about obesity, diabetes, heart diseases. These are all preventable diseases. They all happen because of a lifestyle. So answer your question, I started this, Maria, with a simple purpose that what if we all together can create a world where being sick is a choice. And I really am convinced today more than ever that within a decade, we will get there. Within a decade? Mm -hmm. Wow. I like that.
We need it. Yeah, we all need it. That's the thing. It's not, you know, a lot of people think it is my problem. And I look at the thing and say, this is humanity's problem. I am going to dedicate 10 years of my life to make this happen. But I can't do this alone. I need people like you. I need everyone who's listening to this to believe in it. Because unless millions of us can come together and really understand what causes these diseases, we'll never be able to solve them. And that's the reason, Maria, we started this campaign called Race to Two Million. That if we can get two million people to use Wyom today, we will have enough of the information to understand what causes every one of these chronic diseases mm. and how we can use just the food and the food nutrients. Let food be thy medicine. Let food be thy medicine, Maria. What are we are not somehow in reinventing things here? This is what we knew 2,500 years ago when Hippocrates said, "All diseases begin in the gut," and he knew that there is no such thing as universal healthy food, right? Yeah. If food that's good for one person can harm someone else, what did he say? One man's food is another man's poison. Did he say that? I don't remember that. I don't. Maybe one of the somebody someone, did, somebody yeah. else did, right? And then he said, let food be thy medicine, let thy medicine be the food, right? But the point really is, why is the food not medicine? Why is it that yeah. we think of this as something we do for energy or nutrition rather than thinking that everything we put in our body really changes our body? Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's, it's interesting because I never heard about the gut yeah. being the, you know, the alarm for yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. And so when I met you, I started to learn about it. And it took me a while to get the package and to send it in and to get results. So then I'd kind of forgotten about everything for a while. I read this book called How to Starve Cancer by yeah. Jane McClelland, mm -hmm. who we just had on the show. And she researched heavily on her own to cure herself of cancer. She had multiple different cancers, and she created cocktails on her own mm -hmm. to heal herself. But she said that the gut breaking down is the first step in cancer. Yeah. And I was like, huh. So she said in the in the book, she said, having diarrhea okay. and um, what was the other thing, Stephanie? I can't remember. It was like, I thought it was normal. Oh, bloating. Yes, bloating. Yes. Yeah. yeah. She was like, I thought bloating and diarrhea yeah. was normal. I was like, yeah, me too. And then I used Viome. And I started right with my superfoods because yeah. I'm such a type A yeah, perfection. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm not going to eat the things that it even says to minimize. I'm just going to eat my superfoods. And within two days, my body, which I thought, I was like, okay, I turned 41. This is probably what happens. Everyone says that yeah. the body just, yeah. you know, Ages. changes and you get, you know, chubby and whatever. I had like a six-month-old baby, Naveen, and I've had the flattest stomach my whole life. Yeah. And I thought this was normal. And when I did Viome, within two days, my stomach went back to normal. I felt better. My stool was perfect. I joke around the house. Now we talk about stool all the time. I'm like, my stool should be published. It's so <laughs> different. <laughs> but it's it's wild because the things that I, it came back that I needed to avoid yeah. were the things I was eating in abundance, which makes sense, right? Yeah. Anything you're doing in extremes. But blueberries, can't do blueberries. But who would have thought? Who would have thought? Spinach, yeah. romaine lettuce, yeah. my favorite things that I knew were healthy. Yeah. And then what it led me to start to realize was it, sensitivities to other things. So I used to get these horrible rashes and I had no idea mm -hmm. why. Oh, maybe because I'm super allergic to dairy, didn't realize, uh, oat milk and yeah. all of those things. And so I was kind of blown away by... The things that I learned. And in fact, it's funny. I don't know how close it is to the blood type diet or if you guys have any connection because when I looked at my blood type, yeah. there were a lot of similarities to what you guys say not to do. There were some that weren't, but I was like, hmm, maybe it gives some credence to that. Actually, it doesn't. And let me tell you why. Both, the, you know, the two types of things that people have these myth around. One is that my DNA is unique to me. And if you can base something on my DNA or a blood type, then somehow I would have un something unique to me. What people don't realize is, let's assume based on my blood type or on my DNA, I get a diet today. Six months later, I get again 50 pounds. My blood type is still the same. And guess what? My DNA is still the same. Now, 
I get depression. Now I get diabetes. Now I get autoimmune diseases. And now I'm falling apart. And I go and say, but you just keep doing what you're doing. Well, my blood type hasn't changed. My DNA hasn't changed. That means my diet should not change. Mm. And I'm looking at the stuff. I'm thinking, wait a sec. I'm falling apart. And you're saying, just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. That means these chronic diseases don't happen because of your blood type or because of your DNA. What is really changing is your gene expression. So your genes never change. Your genes expression is constantly changing. And mm. there was no way to measure the gene expression. And that's the first thing I realized as an entrepreneur. The only way to solve the problem is to ask the right question, not to have necessarily have the right answer, right? And, you know, we can talk about all of that stuff that when you start any business or you're trying to solve any problem, what the first thing you ask is, what is the problem? Yeah. And if you that really changes what problem you're going to solve, right? So as you know, I had another company that's going to the moon and everyone kept asking me, how can possibly you have a company to settle down on the moon? How are you going to grow the food on the moon? And I kept thinking, and they thought that was a problem that needed to solve. How to grow the food on the moon if people are going to live on the moon? And I said, that's a wrong question. What if we simply change the question to say, why do we eat food? Just changing from how to grow the food, the only solution is to grow the food. But if you ask ourselves why we eat food, you say, oh, of course we eat food because we need energy, we need nutrition. Oh, what if you can get energy from radiation? What if you get energy from photosynthesis? What nutrition do you need? You need hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. Well, there is plenty of water. That means we got hydrogen and oxygen. Now we need to find the nitrogen or take enough nitrogen from here. But suddenly the problem that looked impossible mm -hmm. when we were asking the question how to grow the food, it becomes a solvable problem. Right? Yeah, well, you're also looking at it in a different way. Different way. Same thing happened in the gut. So I was doing, you know, before I started the company, I read 10,000 plus research papers. And I'm looking at obesity, diabetes, depression, autoimmune diseases, different cancers. I'm thinking, oh my God, there is something called gut microbiome. What is that thing? And then it occurred to me, you are a moron. <laughs> if this thing is really true, there are 10 companies that do this gut microbiome test and the problem is not getting solved. So you must be a moron because you don't understand this thing. And then it occurred to me, wait a sec, what is the question they are asking? And they were all asking the same question, which is, I want to know what organisms are in my gut. I want to know every organism that's in my gut. And if somehow we can find that out, we'll solve the problem. And I'm thinking, that's the wrong question. What we really need to know is, what are they producing? And the reason that looks very similar, but the problem is, I thought these organisms are like human beings, right? They could be thousands of different people doing exactly the same thing. So simply knowing that two people who have the same disease like diabetes, mm. but completely different organism, they may still be something similar if they're producing the same thing. And here's the worst part. The same organism can produce completely different things based on the environment it is in. So same organism in my gut can produce completely different things than your gut, but it's the same organism. And I thought it's like a human being. Me at work, entrepreneur. Me at home, dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> what changed? Environment, right? So my point is, I, you know, I was thinking oh, about it. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> and suddenly it, suddenly it occurred to me, oh my God, what if we can find out what they're producing? So we need to do the gene expression. And then everyone said, oh, gene expression requires RNA testing. It cannot be done. Guess what? I first believed it couldn't be done. And at the end of the day, I found the technology at the Los Alamos National Lab. They were spending 10 years, billions of dollars for biodefense work. As soon as I saw this, I'm thinking, oh, my God, they're trying to solve the same problem, which is if the bad actor were to get hold of something bad, they want to know what is making people sick. I want to know what is making people sick so I can get them healthy. And I licensed the technology, and which is what created Wyom. Wow. And here's a very interesting thing happened. Now we have hundreds of thousands of people who have taken the test. We can now predict just by looking at your gut, onset of depression, diabetes, obesity, IBS. In fact, now we started doing the oral microbiome, which is saliva. So because we have microbiome in our mouth and yep. our gut. Just by looking at what microbes in the mouth are producing, we can predict oral cancer with 90% accuracy right now. Right. 
And I really believe, and now next thing we are launching, Maria, which I'm going to just announce it just for you. This is the first time I'm going to say oh, that. Oh, cool. Using the few finger prick blood to be able to look at the gene expression of host sites. So think of us as humans. Mm -hmm. We uh, get DNA from our mom and dad, right? They only produce about 22,000 genes. In between, we get 40 trillion microbes in our gut. They produce 2 million genes. That means at best, we are 1% human, right? And what they produce in our gut, it gets absorbed in the blood and it changes our human gene expression, right? And then we have microbes in our mouth. So, so microbes in our mouth that also change what's happening to our food. Right? So we look at the top of the tube, at the end of the tube, and the other side of the tube. Right? Wow. And the, by looking at the blood, which is what we found very interesting, is we get the, all the mitochondria, which is the energy factory of a human mm -hmm. cell, most people may not realize, actually used to be an ancient bacteria captured inside our cell. It has its own DNA. So we look at the how... The mitochondria? Mitochondria. Wow. So mitochondria is actually ancient bacteria. That is the one that produces the energy. Uh, energy is called organelle. So it's essentially inside the cell. So we look at all the mitochondrial gene expression, all the human cell gene expression, all the microbes in the gut, all the microbes in your mouth, and now we have full picture of the humans, right? Wow. And that's why we believe, and I said within a decade, I think we can solve this problem because we're starting to understand that Alzheimer is coming because of many of the gut organisms. They are able to break free from the gut by essentially making the leaky gut. So they bind to the cells. They make the gut permeable. They move out. They infect our central nervous system called CNS. And then they go to the blood-brain barrier and they're able to do the same thing, make it permeable. And when it goes into our brain, our brain thinks, oh my God, this is being, infection is coming. They use the the protective system, so glial cells start to release amyloid beta. So amyloid beta, is that people think is what causes Alzheimer, is actually the body's way of protecting itself. Oh, wow. Right. So what they find is that all these people who have Alzheimer or Parkinson's, they have massive amount of infection in the brain. And that amyloid beta is supposed to get washed away when you get a good sleep, right? And sometimes what's happening is that we are actually not washing out these um, amyloid beta, and that's where they get tangled up. So what they're realizing is that if we can get rid of these infections right from the oral microbiome or the gut microbiome and, and tighten the junction, you can start to get a cure for these diseases. So we are not- After you've already been diagnosed? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we in fact- And that would be just by changing your diet mm -hmm. according to the tests? Yeah. So we are actually now doing, um, Maria, about 50. I think I've gotten the chills maybe five times through this interview already. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm just really honestly, I feel this is a, we living in the most amazing time in the human history. There will never be again a time in the human history where we now have the technology, where you and I and anyone listening to it has a power to change the way people live their life, change the trajectory of how humanity is going to live can be done by an individual and a small group of people. It doesn't require a Fortune 500 company, kings or queens or the superpower. Guess who is going to the space? It's entrepreneurs like Jeff, right? It is Elon, it is Richard, it's us. I mean, these are the entrepreneurs pushing the boundaries of what is possible. The healthcare is not going to be solved by Obamacare or Trump care or Putin care. It's going to be solved mm -hmm. by someone like us and saying, enough is enough. We're mm -hmm. going to do that. Energy, it is all about you know food, abundance, creating abundance of food, creating abundance of energy, creating abundance of fresh water. These are the problems that entrepreneurs are going to solve. And what I'm say, uh, about to say was that we are now doing 15 clinical trials. So we just announced the trials with Mayo Clinic. Can we just simply use the diet and supplement to get rid, to get rid of insomnia and obesity? We just announced a uh, uh, last week with GlaxoSmithKline, can we develop vaccines to prevent chronic diseases? Think about it for a second. Double the vaccine? No, prevent chronic diseases. The vaccines to prevent chronic diseases. Ah. And here's why. If we believe the microbes are responsible for causing chronic diseases, you can develop a vaccine against that microbe. And if we can do that, we can prevent 
imagine you're born and you take a vaccine to prevent ob- diabetes or obesity right depression yeah. autoimmune diseases various types of cancer some day you and i can have a vaccine for pancreatic cancer breast cancer ovarian cancer colorectal cancer wow. right and as i said it gets a chill imagine if a humanity some day would be like that our children i know our children some day going to look at me and say dad in your times people used to suffer with these diseases what kind of cruel world you lived in yeah. you mean you didn't have a cure for these you just allowed people to suffer and you gave them this chemotherapy which is a poison hoping something will happen like you put a leech and hoping that we can bleed the thing out, right I mean, this is some day they it's not that humanity is going to run out of problems but they'll be having a different problem they won't be talking about chronic diseases they'll be talking about and saying that why do people talk why can't they just transmit their ideas mm-hmm. brain to brain that means it is such a slow mode of communication they can't just have high bandwidth communication with brain to brain and they just understand what he's trying to say you why do you spend for an hour trying to explain to everyone what you're doing you mean you just couldn't just send it to them right yeah uh, or better yet why do we go to college and spend all this time learning from the guy can we just upload the brain and maybe even subscribe to maria's brain that means as she is learning and i just keep getting the update every month i pay 9 9.95 and i'm getting an upgrade of maria's brain hilarious <laughs> yeah but the point is these are the problems they will be trying to solve right and hopefully our generation would have solved the problem for them so they don't have to worry about chronic diseases so not only we can come together for ourselves we should do it for our children and grandchildren so we don't have to watch them suffer it's yeah. okay sometimes i feel i you know watching your parents suffer is one thing watching yourself and your spouse suffer you can deal with it watching your children suffer and watching your grandchildren suffer that breaks your heart yeah right and that is what this is all about is can we come together so it's funny so many things are going through my head but one thing that i have to mention because it's just so wild is i'm hearing you talk about what the problems could be right like why can't we transfer brain to brain and just what you're talking about it's clear these conversations you're having them in your circles yeah. and that your circles are so elevated that people are thinking along those lines and then i think of the other conversations that are happening in the world where uh it's conspiracy theories and you know oh the president he did this and then this person did that and i just spilled my coffee all over my phone <laughs> and um just the negativity that's out there and and i think it's just a, a moment that i wanted to just have to explain to people really look at the people that you have around you are they elevating your conversation because i am so inspired just hearing this conversation and hearing where your brain is going and you know i've had conversations with elon musk and yeah. they're not about conspiracies and all of this it's about building and creating and in- inspiration and and dreaming right it's it's finding the possibility in everything and i just had to say it because because i i sometimes end up around those other conversations and i'm going to be going home soon and i'm sure i'll be around them again um for uh for a week and you're just like wait you need to elevate the people you have around you but i love this whole concept and um and i think it's really important for people to know that there are clinical trials for these things and okay, there is we're possibility doing, we're doing autism right now we're starting next week a trial to reverse autism think about for a second i mean we if we can start to think about because now we are learning that even the time during pregnancy what mother's microbiome changes the risk of the child's developing diseases right so during pregnancy the mother's microbiome has a lot of impact on child's health but the mode of delivery i mean when the baby goes through the birth canal that's the first exposure my um, the get baby gets to all the microbes through the birth canal 
And if you somehow, uh, you know, some people do it because it's absolutely needed and I'm not going to say that's a bad thing. But some people do it for convenience and they are just denying that baby that exposure the baby is going to get to be healthy for the rest of their life. Wait, so what are they denying? I'm confused. They do C-section for convenience. Oh, got it, right? got it. So when they do a C-section, the baby is not exposed to the uh, birth canal, the microbes from the birth canal. And then you get exposed to the skin microbiome, which is not very good. And... Um, when it is needed, it is absolutely necessary. In what other thing that happens is, you know, you give antibiotics and, you know, baby got an ear infection. There is a 90% chance that, you know, body will take care of it. But mothers want easy way out because baby is crying and they give them antibiotics. That completely kills the ecosystem of their gut. It's yeah, like, but it's not that they, some of them might, but I think also we are trained yeah. in society to go to a doctor and do as they say. Yep. And most people are overwhelmed, yep. can't put, you know, are fight, struggling to put money on their table to survive. And they need that solution and they don't have the time There's, or really understand how to do their own research sometimes, right? This is why yeah. we bring them people on this show that can educate them on that. But it is scary that that is our system because it's broken. It's not the the 100% right system. Um, what should be, what's another option for them? Well, you know, think about it. I mean, it's not the doctors have a bad intent. It's not they are mm -hmm. bad people. It's not they are the evil in James Bond movie. No, right? no. They it's are, just what they learn and that's their system. They're taught from the, when they go to the medical school, they're taught if there is a ill, there is a pill. And for all practical purposes, they become the salespeople for pharmaceutical companies. They are not taught about nutrition. They're not even taught about microbiome. They're not even yep. taught about that we are a walking, talking ecosystem. Mm -hmm. We're 40 trillions of them and one of us. In fact, if you look at a bigger picture, Mary, this is going to be really interesting to think about, right? In a big, if you think about the microbes in this pl on planet Earth evolved three and a half billion years ago. Humans, give or take, all ancestors are less than half a million. That means these guys have been around for three billion years before us. There is, they're everywhere. Every breath you take, you're breathing billions of them, right? There are 40 trillion inside us, and people just don't you know, understand these large numbers. That's equivalent of all human beings in 5,000 Earth living inside each one of us, right? We live in their world. We are a parasite in their world. That means we are using them for our own benefit, right? If you think in a bigger picture, it is quite likely that in not only we are a walking, talking ecosystem inside us, outside us, everything that happens changes us. What happens inside us changes the world, right? In fact, I came up with this really funny story. That if you allow me to indulge for 90 minutes, 90 seconds, yeah. I, can, I came up with this theory of if you think about humans, Right. How will the humans be, how, why were humans created and how were humans created? And if you look at it from bacterial world, here is how I think could have happened. So this is a, the creativity story of how humans were created. So one day I believe all the bacteria and viruses and yeast and the fungus and mold all got together and said, we're sick and tired of living in this small space. We want to take over the world. And the younger one said, I have a solution. What is your solution? What if we can create something bipedal? We can, all, we can, many of us can live right inside it. All we have to do is keep this thing healthy. We can make it crave anything we want. It's going to run around everywhere finding the food that we crave and it's going to feed us. It's going to go all over the world. It's going to poop everywhere. It's going to spread, <laughs> it's going to spread us around and we're going to take over the world. And they created us and they call this invention humans. And as soon as they created humans, they all looked at each other. Oh, my God, mm -hmm. what have we just done? Oh, poop. <laughs> and the reason they worried was, today, as you talk to Elon, we all worry about artificial intelligence because we wonder what if someday AI becomes smarter than us, what is going to happen to us? Microbes are no dumb. They got together again and say, Master, Master, we have a problem. What's the problem, son? Aren't you worried we created humans and someday they might become smarter than us? What are we going to do about that? Master said, we solved that problem when we created them. Master, what did you do? Well, right inside their cell, we put one of our brothers right inside their cell. They call that mitochondria. We talk, we live in the gut. We talk to mitochondria all the time. 
Anytime they don't treat us well, we tell the mitochondria to shut the energy down. They're dead. Master, that is brilliant, but you're not thinking about the biggest problem. What is that? They're starting to develop brain. What are we going to do about the brain they're developing? Master said, that is the first thing we thought about. Remember, we live in the gut. We put a direct connection to the brain. Even though they call that a vagus nerve, don't worry. What happens in the gut doesn't stay in the gut. It goes everywhere. We control their emotions. We control their mood. We control their behavior. Through the vagus nerve, we make them decide what's happening. The thing that makes them feel good, the serotonin, 90% of the serotonin, we produce it ourselves. They want to feel good, they're going to feed us well. And guess what? Like a good leader, we're going to make them think they are in control. But we're going to sit here and pull the string like a puppet master. So they're nothing but our puppet. So sit back, enjoy, you have taken over the world. And ladies and gentlemen, that is who we are as humans. Wow. I like that story. <laughs> but, no, my point is, I feel like it's a children's book that's like a little scary. <laughs> but but point is really is what I'm trying to make is now there are scientific evidence to show that our gut microbiome control our mood amygdala, yeah. mood emotions through the vagus nerve 100%. for their own benefit. That's how we get depression and anxiety and ADHD. Mm -hmm. right? So my point is, even though it's a funny story, but it's not there's scientific evidence for it. Right? Yeah, no, it makes so much sense. I know even with my husband, he's about to do the Viome as well because he's seen the progress with me. And, you know, he was not feeding his microbiome well, Naveen. Uh-oh. Uh, not at all. Um, guess what? And they make them, they, they make them pay. <laughs> yeah, and he was paying. And, and he would go into deep depressions and... He would get really dark and it got worse and worse and worse. And between no sleep, yeah. like no sleep, and then the poor diet, it hit me one day and I said, oh my God, this is what it is. Yeah. And he finally was in that receptive place to understand it and get it. And he's been so much better as he's making those adjustments and those changes. Honestly, I would tell you that this will hopefully, if he follows his recommendations, we have had amazing success, yeah. uh, Maria. I mean, yeah. Tell me some of the success stories. It's hard for me to say because you know uh, FDA thinks that I'm making a claim, so I don't want anybody to think that we are diagnosing anything or curing anything. But the people who done the test, anecdotally, they will. I mean, we get thousands of emails a day. People are telling us their depression is gone, their mm -hmm. anxiety is gone, their acne is gone. They no longer have eczema. People are telling us that two fungus is gone and the things we used to call, you know, they're losing weight. So they, you know, lose some, one woman says she lost 150 pounds, other losing 20 pounds. I lost pounds, weight right? too. But my point is, it's that simple that things that we used to call diseases were really nothing but the symptom of the inflammation in the gut. And yeah. when you get rid of the inflammation, everything calms down. Your immune system actually gets back to balance because really what happens is many of these diseases are really the immune system going haywire, right? And 70% of our immune system is along our gut lining. So as we get the microbiome dysbiosis to go down, the gut is balanced, releasing the nutrients mm -hmm. that are anti-inflammatory, such as short chain fatty acids, and stop releasing the toxins like lipopolysaccharides, which are highly inflammatory. Suddenly, the immune system now is able to deal with everything else. Mm -hmm. And that's what gets rid of all of these things we call diseases. They were nothing but the symptom of the things that are going on inside us. So... If someone is eating uh, things that they're, sometimes most people will know what they're allergic to, but say things that they're highly sensitive to, but they don't realize, what is that doing to your microbiome? So, so very interesting thing is, a lot of the times we don't know that, right? So for example, I did the test and again, I thought I was really a healthy eater. I was eating everything that I thought is healthy. So, you know, I did the test and you know what it tells me? Don't eat apple. And then it tells me why. I have apple chlorectic leaf virus, and if I keep eating apple, I'm going to feed that virus. Don't do it. He says, don't eat broccoli and cabbage and Brussels sprout. And I'm thinking, you got to be kidding me. They're healthy food. Yeah. It turns out my sulfide score is so high, and these things contain very high amount of sulfate, and I didn't even notice it. So I was eating them thinking they're healthy, and they were actually harming me. It says, don't eat spinach. Because I have very, I cannot digest oxalic acid. And now suddenly I thought Popeye told me to eat spinach. Yes. And 
But turns out Popeye was not a scientist. I know. I was horrified on the things I couldn't eat anymore. Um, I think Stephanie has a question in the booth. I see a, a raised hand. Quick Go ahead. question. You were saying that no man's or woman's microbiome is the same and th- yep. the food we eat is different. Is there any similarities you're seeing between regions that we originated from, like our ancestors, or is there any sort of pattern that you're seeing? Yeah. So it's very interesting is that, uh, you know, our gut micro, the, even though our DNA between any two human beings is like 99% the same. When it comes to a gut microbiome, it's less than 5% similar. So people who tend to originate from the same region tend to generally start out with a similar microbiome. But it changes mm-hmm. so every time the air you breathe, the people you meet, the food you eat are fundamentally changing everything, right? So think of your gut microbiome as a chemical factory. When you put in the different input, the food you eat suddenly changes which, who survives and who yeah. dies, right? Yeah, like if you're stressed in one period of your life, your mi- microbiome will change. If you're not stressed, and then... But that's only one part. Right. But, but if you eat a certain food, only a certain microbes can digest that. That means they thrive on it and others start to die, right? Yeah. And so what happens if you consistently are eating the same things? So if you're consistently eating the same thing, what's happening, you're allowing the one set of things to keep growing and they become bad. Even the good people become bad when they're in the mob. Right. So even the things that normally are good, once they really become higher quantity, then there is no balance anymore. Then suddenly even the good people become bad and you put them in a mob. Right. They yeah. all become bad. They start to form biofilm. They start to produce toxin because there is nothing there to keep them in check. So the idea of the best ecosystem really is lots and lots of different types of people, diversity, they're keeping each other in check. So no one is really has a good control there. Yeah. Right? An interesting thing, there is no such thing as one healthy microbiome. So think of your gut like more like a rainforest. Every step you take in the rainforest is completely different um, ecosystem, but yet everything is lush and green. That means you can have a lush and green gut doesn't have to be same as next person. It just needs to be variety of things it's producing. The more types of things it's producing, the more the nutrients you're mm-hmm. getting, the more things you're resistant to. And when you have a pathogen or infection, these guys don't like them either. They're yeah. going to go out and fight that out. So the diverse ecosystem allows for you not to have the you know infections. It actually now shown that even the flu or other infectious diseases actually can be controlled. We know people, they never get sick. And yeah. some people are always sick. Why is that? Did somebody occurred that we have the same DNA. Why is it some people always get sick, some not? This is all what's happening in our gut microbiome and our immune system. So what I find really fascinating is that we never think of ourselves as, you know, this a changing ecosystem. We think we are you know, we are stable. Once we find what's good for us, we can keep doing the same thing for the rest of our life. And what, without realizing that internal stuff is constantly changing. Mm-hmm. And even the diet that you used to eat suddenly kept your stomach flat, suddenly you're getting blue. I'm saying, I haven't changed anything. Why am I getting weight? Yeah. Right? And that's why, because your ecosystem had changed, now you have to feed a different ecosystem. And then you go back to exactly that. What happened to you is actually very typical. You're healthy. You start to change the ecosystem because you're eating and suddenly I'm gaining weight and you change your diet and boom, you're back to that. What happened? Yeah. It is a changing ecosystem. Right? Mm-hmm. It's funny. When I went on my honeymoon last year around this time, we were in Italy and, you know, in the, the restaurant and the hotel, they always had this beautiful buffet and all these different fruits yeah. and things available. And so I normally was scared to eat fruit because of the glucose and yeah. I, I, fall into prediabetes a lot. But this time I just enjoyed them. I didn't have yeah. a lot, yeah. but I had different things. And I realized I felt so much better yeah. because my body was getting different sources of nutrients and energy. And so I've been saying to my husband, I'm like, you're drinking and eating the same things every day. That is not good for you. You have to change it up. You have to keep um, variety. And so I think that's really important for people to know. I think the the biggest things are that your microbiome and your gut are really controlling everything. And it's sitting here in me and I'm realizing my mom has stage four brain cancer, as you know, and her tumor's back and we're in a very difficult time. Um, have she done the biome test and find the diet? And as I'm sitting here thinking I've starved her of sugar, 
Um, she's eating super clean, very, very little meat, if any, and vegetables. And I'm like, gosh, I really get a check her microbiome. And you know what I remembered? Yeah. So when you said the toe fungus, because she's had toe fungus forever. Dang. And she's had it forever. She's had various infections forever that are so hard to go away. And no one could help me figure it out. I had a guy come to me and says, I've had the toe fungus for 15 years. And the doctor says, the only thing we can do is now operate on it. And he said, I followed your diet and it's gone. And he wanted to show me the pictures of before and after. I said, I believe you. I don't need to yeah, see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to see that. <laughs> but point I'm saying mm -hmm. is that we didn't even ever set out to cure that. It was simply the symptom. Right? Let food be thy medicine. Let food be thy medicine. So I really, you know, it's very interesting that we actually published a paper that we are able to predict your glucose response in your blood just by looking at what's happening in your gut. So we can see that two people who are eating exactly the same slice of bread one can have a six times more response, a glucose response, and other can have none. And intuitively, we knew that because we see some people eat bread all day, they never get fat. And some people smell bread and they get fat. What yeah. Is, right? It's because their body responds differently. And yeah. we, we actually proved it now. So we published a paper now that you, anybody can go online and check it. We showed that two people eating exactly the same food have a completely different response to them, banana or bread. Yeah. Or I mean, so that's it makes sense because I have friends who hate me for being able to eat what I want. And if they even look at it, yeah. they gain weight. So yeah. that example yeah. rings true for me. Yeah. Um, but it makes me realize that I got to get my mom on this. And that's going to be the biggest probably step in her um, beating the cancer again. I just want you to say it so that I don't get in trouble. We absolutely do not tell you that we can cure brain cancer. Yeah, okay, no, more. I know that. But I know from everything I've read that the microbiome is the beginning of all of these illnesses. And I know when I look at myself, um, you would think, you know, I'm a healthy person. But as I start to look at it, I'm like, well, I have had Hashimoto's my whole life. for Autoimmune disease? Yep. Pre-diabetic yeah. most of the time. Uh, obviously had a brain tumor, have, whatever. Um, those are all autoimmune. Yeah. And then, of course, the brain tumor is probably just the body expressing it in another way. It's basically your immune system not killing the cancer cells. I mean, think about it. Cancer should never be developed because your body's immune system is constantly killing the cells that go out of whack. The only time the cancer grows is because the immune system is not killing those cancer mm -hmm. cells, right? And there are a couple of theories is that you know, microbiome works with the immune system and say, hey, all good here, don't kill us. We are all good. We are all friends here. Mm -hmm. I mean, in a, in a, yeah, in but a, they're in disguise. But they just now, the, if once they go around the cancer cells, they tell the immune system, this is all good here. And the cancer basically keeps growing. Mm -hmm. And basically, microbes are protecting it, right? And now, once you can get rid of that, the immune system will go after the cancer, which is what we've seen many, many yeah. times. In fact, I think Cleveland Clinic published a research that took 1,600 breast cancer tissue, and they found that all of them had the microbes. Right? Alzheimer, they found the same thing. So what we're starting to see is that microbes are actually, there's not a day goes by. There's not a research. So if anybody, I would tell you, what, Maria, if you could do one thing, set a Google alert on microbiome. Mm -hmm. Every day you're going to see four or five research. We saw yesterday, not only the heart diseases are now linked to microbes, even the recovery from the operation depends on your gut microbes. Whether wow. you, immunotherapy for cancer, whether it works or how effective it is, depends on your gut microbe. And here's the more interesting part. Huh. The drugs we take, their effectiveness and side effect depends on your gut microbes. And here's why. You take a drug, it goes into a chemical factory called gut microbiome. It changes that. So there is a research that came out a month ago the people who had Parkinson's disease, they are taking this drug called Levdopa. That's the only drug. And some people, the microbes are eating that drug. They metabolize the drug and the humans will have no effect. And they kept wondering why the drugs didn't work. Because the microbes were eating the drug. Wow. Then they took the top 10 drugs and sh saw their side effects and the effectiveness depends on what gut does with them. So imagine that yeah. whether you even the drug and the cure works depends on your gut microbes. So it's really is we have to change our mindset. We are not alone in this world. We are walking, yeah. talking, 40 trillion ecosystem. Well, and also the other thing is, is like, okay, so I have all these different things and they're kind of small stages where they don't require medication. 
doctors don't say, hey, change go it. change your, you know, diet, diet start doing this, Otherwise, take these supplements. They don't really say that stuff. They just wait till you get the diagnosis of diabetes type one or type two or thyroid and you need surgery or whatever. And then they late. give you the medication. It's too late. So that's why I've been on this journey to try to stop everything and re regain and go back the other way and fix it. Yes. And so I want to ask you about the app. So, yeah. so part of this, when you sign up for Viome, you have an app, yep. which you guys did an update. And now it makes me log in with my password every single time. No, Is there a fix? There's a face ID. What? There's a face ID you should be able to use. Yeah. It doesn't work for it, me. You have to help me. I will do that. Log in with face ID. Oh, maybe that's what it is. Oh, yay. Finally. It's been making me do it every single time. And it's been so frustrating. See, this is why I have you. Okay. So when you send in your kit, how long does it take to get the results now? Uh, under two weeks. Two weeks now? Or less than that. Okay, great. Yep. Um, I think when I did it, it was a little bit longer, but it was a while ago. And you know what happened? We got overwhelmed. Our demand went up five to eight times and we just weren't ready for it. Yeah. So we hired more robots, hired more people, built, Good. built a lab. Perfect. Because I need my mom's fast track. Yeah. So uh, we're all going to do it here. Steven, Steph, Kevin, my husband. Um, so I did mine. I got my results. And then the app will alert you yes. that your results are in. It will give you your recommendations, and it's really easy. It's in four boxes. So it says your foods to avoid and minimize, your superfoods, the supplements, and then all your foods. And then it gives you your results. So it says your scores to focus on, and it tells you the things that you're deficient in or have efficient inefficiencies in. Um, and what are those, Maria? Let's go. And we're going to go to it. <laughs> and then it gives you your things that you're okay, and then the scores that are really good. Yep. So my results and, and the, the things I to, need foods to avoid and it tells you why which is the magical part it tells you here are your superfoods and why yeah I want to go through this step by step because okay. I feel like I probably know the basic understanding of it and I want you to help walk us through so anyone who's doing this really truly understands the results and how you're because for the longest time I'm like oh I have all these problems well how do I fix them but it tells and I wasn't understanding that by eating those foods, that was the fix. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a minute and, and that the supplement recommendation was the fix. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, I get it now. Um, so uh, mine was the digestive efficiency. Yep. So uh, if you want to explain that, it might be better for you to explain it, but it I needs improvement. I don't need to. Basically, you click on it. Mm -hmm. It says the score is a comprehensive microbial uh, reflection of your GI tract functions. The score consists of multiple activity patterns related to digestion, such as the movement of food, specific macronutrient breakdown ability, and your gut lining health from your first bite of food to the time it leaves your body. When this score needs improvement or it is suboptimal, it means that some of your digestive functions need support. And by the way, there is a video, that two minute video that explains what it is. So for every score, you can, for every single result, it explains what it is. There is a two-minute video that explains what it is. So we try to make it as easy for mm -hmm. everyone to understand. So there are several scores, which I would call individual scores, So such, such as your butyrate production, your oxalate mechanism, right? Your flagella production, and, and some are what I call meta scores, right? So digestive efficiency is a meta score that consists of many things underneath it, right? So your digestive efficiency is... Overall, how well are you digesting your food? Yeah, and, and that I is, wasn't. And that's really what's happening. Which that, is why I was bloated and had diarrhea, exactly. right? Exactly. So then protein fermentation. Yeah. So, so I wasn't digesting protein properly. So that's exactly what happens. So when you take protein and if it's not digested properly, it goes to your gut where it is ferments. So microbes ferment this protein and in turn they release ammonia and sulfide that causes massive inflammation. So when we see the protein fermentation is poor, you have two choices either to cut down the intake of protein or you take digestive enzyme along with the protein so it can get digested so the microbes don't have to ferment it. Mm -hmm. And that's why the supplements become really important because you have to take them along with that. Otherwise, it's not going to get digested. So if you have protein fermentation issues like yeah. I do, can you still, like I don't eat chicken or anything like that. So my protein, I mean, I might be able to get it from some vegetables, I guess, 
But um, we get them. I, I'm a vegetarian, so I get them from tofu and lentils and stuff. Then what really? Fast- I can only eat black beans, Naveen. According to this, so black beans. It gets about- old after a while. So I sometimes in my smoothie, like this morning, I'll throw in a little protein powder. And as long as the protein powder is coming from the things that are good for you, like a whey protein. That's or, what it is. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I do the the probiotics yeah. before that. This suggests I do. And also, if I'm assuming you might also have a digestive and enzyme that you should take that could help a lot. Yeah. Well, I'll get to what it's suggested because I think it was just the probiotic, but then it says putrescine production yeah, yeah, yeah. pathways. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this is the um, putrescine, putrescine is a molecular yeah. byproduct of a protein fermentation. Yes. So it's connected to the, yeah, yeah. the protein breakdown yeah, issues. Yeah, yeah. And then oxalate metabolism yes. pathways. Yeah. So that is actually is what digests things that have oxalic acid, such as spinach and kale. So most people who are eating it and if they have poor oxalate mechanism, it's only harming them. They think I'm eating kale. I'm such a good person. Yes. But guess what? Not you. Yes. No. I've been a rabbit my whole life. Yeah. I used to live for Thanksgiving dinner just for the salad. Oh I am a crazy salad person. But, you know, so you, now I can only eat kale. You and our daughter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then uric acid production pathways yeah. needed help. Yeah. Oh, no wonder I was drinking beer. Oh, I loved beer and I love sushi. And that's all the breakdown of purines, which can be found in beer, sugary sodas, seafood, shellfish, veal, bacon, and organ meats, which I don't eat. But um, so there you go. It's it's no coincidence, the things I was doing and eating and the problems that I was having. And then scores that are good. So at least what I'm saying is you can see, you don't have to ask me. It tells you exactly what it is. Yeah. So it tells you all of them. And then it tells you what's um, what's okay. And then it says coming soon, microbial richness. That's com- coming soon. What is it? It's coming very soon. And what is that? It basically tells you the diversity and uh, of all your microbes, how many and how many of each. And that really shows you that the more diverse they are, the better you are. Got it. So in terms of, in terms of their functions. When I go to supplements, it yep. says here are the supplements recommended for your gut. Um, and it tells me a probiotic is really good. So, um, and by the way, we don't sell any, as you probably imagined, right? Yeah. We just simply recommend it and we link it to Amazon. You can go buy it. Yeah. So this is incredible. Now here's my other question. Uh -uh. So I started focusing on just my superfoods, but I mean, you can be a little limited at some point. Go to all your foods and you can type in. Yeah, that's what I do. And I, when I'm questioning, I'm at a restaurant, I'm questioning what I can and can't have, but Your foods to minimize. So if I go in here and it says beets, avoid. Actually, let me go down to minimize because when it says avoid, I just don't do it, period. But it says uh, uh, minimize almonds. It says serving size 20 nuts. Does that mean that's the most you can have? Yeah, most in a week. In a week? Yeah. Oh, so that's not clear. Oops, oops. Okay, so we should fix that. Yes. I think that would be cool is to let people know that um, that's for a week. So... If we're avoiding um, something, I mean, that's obviously easy. Um, but almond milk, I want to look because I think it said I can do almond yeah, milk, so but I can't do almonds. That's correct. So it's a concentration of that and the amount of... Um, yeah, enjoy. Yeah, it in- says un- enjoy yeah. almond milk. So it didn't make any sense to me. Yeah, no, it does make sense to me. It's because really... The, I mean, <laughs> to you. <laughs> <laughs> make it make sense to me, Naveen. Yeah, so basically the, it's one of the things is always is the almond milk is really the concentrated the amount of protein you have is completely changes in terms of what is there in individual almonds, right? So almonds may not be good for you, but the almond milk, the way they do, because there's no more shell of that, right? Because it's all gone. Is it because it's easier to digest because it's already digested in a sense? And you're only getting the inside part, which is the milk part, and you're not getting the outside skin. Ah, got it. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. And so in the, um, the, basically the nutrients, the bioactive nutrients and almond milks are very different from what they are in the individual almonds. Okay. And that is really always, I mean, so that's really interesting. I don't know if oat, I mean, I have become a fan of oat milk since my- I love it. I'm so allergic to it. My legs get itchy instantly. It's so sad. Um, And then it tells you that once you've completed the 90 days, that you need to order a new test kit. So to order a test kit, it's about $200, right? No, no, no. How much was it? So it is $149 right now. Okay. And the retest is only $119. Okay. So it's really come down. By the way, it used to be $995 a year ago. So we have done everything I could 
to bring our cost down. So our cost at this point, just to be clear, I mean, we may, our cost have come down to $119 right now. So we make about $30 when you buy at $149. And after that, we actually make zero. And we still spend about $2 million plus per month for people. So we do, 119 is just to serve the customer, right? But we really believe at the end of the day, I can continue funding the people for a couple of years. And um, as long as we understand the data from people, that what's going on, we can really solve this problem. As you know, Murray, I mean, I came to... I don't know how much you know about my background. I, you know, I lived in India. We had no food to eat. We were growing in a very poor family. We had no place to stay. I came to the United States about 37 years ago uh, with $5 in my pocket, didn't speak the language, and some would argue I still don't, but that's a nah. different story. Um, God has been very kind to us. I have started seven companies, and knock on wood, or at least the granite, it's <laughs> been... Um, Life, God has given us more than anything we could have ever asked for. And I look back in my life, the people who helped me don't need my help. So I am at this point in my life, I'm thinking, what can I do to pay back to the society? And I felt that if I can work on companies that can help a billion people live a better life, that will be my way of paying forward to pay back. And that's the reason I started. I thought Instead of sitting on some warm island, which I do own, unfortunately. Ha! Ah, let's go, everybody! Team better together! Um, I'm kidding. <laughs> but um, I thought, that, you know, what if I could dedicate my next decade of my life to solving this problem? We could fund it for many years just for the people. And if we can just recover an, our marginal cost, we could solve this problem. Mm -hmm. And if we do that, we will help a billion people and hopefully the humanity away from the suffering from chronic diseases. That could be the best thing I did for our children and grandchildren. They don't need more money from me. They just need this problem solved. Otherwise, they're going to be lying in some chronic disease and thinking, how much money can I spend to get rid of it? Why don't yeah. I just solve the problem for them? It's amazing. It's amazing. It feels a lot like what we're doing at After Buzz TV which is funny for our hosts in, in a different way Tell me. and helping all of these young hosts have a safe place to build their careers and, and grow their talents. And, um, and so we have a two part mission, which is to create good content, but then also to nurture and build the careers of all of these hosts and having gone through, you know, the, the real world in the entertainment business and seeing the difficulties that lie um, ahead for them, um, we do the same thing and, and it's at our cost. Um, and it's, it's like, I tell my husband sometimes I'm like, do these, do these guys really know, like, we're basically paying for all of their dreams to come true when, you know, once in a while you're like, I wonder if they really understand. <laughs> well, well, honestly, you're not doing it for them. You're, yeah. doing, you're doing it for the happiness for yourself, right? Yeah. So at the end of the day, it makes us happy when you do something for someone without expecting something back. Mm -hmm. As, you know, I want to, first of all, thank you for doing that. And I was going to tell you that if there is anything I can do from the entrepreneurial side to make these people create great businesses, you have my heart and soul and I would do it. Oh, absolute, thank you. Absolutely. At nothing, I need nothing in back, return from that. So I would be thrilled. That would be to, amazing. To help them. Because, you know, one of the things we learn in life is the life of an entrepreneur, just like any host or anything, is like a heartbeat. It goes up and down. Mm -hmm. When it is smooth, you're dead. Right. So anytime people think they're looking for a smooth life, they are looking for a dead life. Ups and downs tell us that we are alive. And the trick in that is when you are down, you should never give up. Hunker down and you know the next beat is going to be up. But when you and when you're on the top of that beat, never get too cocky. But just remember the winter is coming and winter will come. And that's the lesson we all have to learn. When things are really good for us. Don't become so cocky that you never realize how bad things are for people because you know the next beat when it's down, you'll be one of them. Wow. That is amazing, amazing advice. I love it. This is like exactly the conversation we were having when I first met you. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Um, I have to ask one more question about the Viome because I feel like I want to clarify it for our audience. So it's 149 to get the initial. Yeah. 119 for the renewal or the, the second test kit. 
how often you're doing it every 90 days, you're retesting your microbiome because you have to uh, make adjustments, right? How big are those adjustments usually? So it depends on where you start from. When you have a massive amount of symptoms, it's going to take a while for you to get a good balance. I think what's going to start happening is once you get to a good place, the things don't change as much once you have a lot of diversity because once you have a diversity of functions, you are able to do more things than when you have only little diversity, right? So I think after a while, I think it's okay to be doing it maybe once every six months or once a year, but you still have to tune your body mm. at least once a year. I mean, you tune your car once a year for health. Totally, heavens, right? yeah. Right? So it is one of those things that you say, okay, I'm going to get to a good place and then I'm going to readjust every six months or every 12 months as yeah. you can do. Well, also, I think it becomes your new way of life, right? Yeah. So now I'm not thinking as much of what am I going to eat for fun? I'm thinking of what am I going to eat to make sure I'm powering up my body in the best way possible. And then once you understand the concept of diversity yep. in your gut, yep. then once you get yourself to a good place, like you said, that makes sense that you can just kind of be free for a while, and yeah. then just check in and see how you're doing exactly. once or twice a year. I like that. And it's very interesting that people always ask about, you know, these tests, but these say people ask, how often do you have to work out? Oh, a lot, <laughs> right? I mean, people sign up for gym membership. Mm -hmm. and they, I mean, you have to really take care of your body. You yeah. can't just be in this, oh, I took, I mean, I checked it 10 years ago. What do you mean that something had changed now? Yeah, absolutely. Right. It makes so much sense. Steven, I bet you you have some burning questions in there. I hit the wrong button. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was like, no, actually, I don't. No, I actually don't. No, uh, I'm actually kind of curious with the test, are there any specific foods or drinks that you should avoid that could alter the results of it? Like, are there different things that you could, like maybe you have something that's super acidic, so it kills a lot of the microbiome that normally you don't experience? Like, will orange juice alter the effects because it kind of eliminates some of the microbiome that you're expecting? Are you saying just before you do the test? Yeah, is there you something the you should be careful and of? And then what's the timeline? Like, I know that the test is it's testing your stool. Um, like, what what day in advance is that actually testing? Is it like, should you try to eat specific foods to kind of prepare yourself to get the widest variety of testing? or No. So the interesting thing is, we look at what is going on and it's a snapshot to tell you what to do from here. You don't want to be in a situation when you say, like my wife does, oh, the cleaners are coming, so let me clean the house. Honey, the cleaners are coming to clean the house. Yeah. <laughs> right? So in a sense, there is, uh, you know, microbes, <laughs> you, microbes don't quite change uh, with the, you know, you, because what you ate for dinner. So think of it like throwing a pebble in an ocean. Yeah, there is a little bit of perturbation, but it comes right back to where it was. So it really, so we actually published a paper on an international journal of genomics because everybody thought, oh my God, it really depends on what we ate. We in fact showed the people we took their microbiome every day for 30 days. And we showed that it really, as long as they're eating a similar type of food, their microbiome doesn't really change what they ate last night, right? It changes when you are suddenly, you're eating all the meat and you become a vegan. Of course, it's going to change. And even then, it takes 60, 90 days to change. It's like, you know, slowly, slowly, these guys say, okay, now we have a new normal, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not something what you ate last night is going to change your results. But what's going to change the results is going to be if you change your diet substantially for 60 or 90 days, then you're going to have an ecosystem change. Yeah. So don't need to worry about it. The only time we tell you not to do the test is if you have taken an antibiotics, then wait for at least a month to do that. So I would say two to four weeks is what we tell people is that wait four weeks before you do the test because you want to get rebuilt because antibiotics like throwing a nuclear bomb inside your body. It just yeah. kills everything. Yeah. What about for someone like my mom who was just put on a very low dose of antibiotic because of her urinary infections and stuff and she's got to be on it for, for a long time because we couldn't get rid of them? Well, Partly, I hate to say that it really is the issue. That's the all common theme. There is a two fungus are having all mm -hmm. the issues she having. It's all coming from the gut microbes. So what yeah. I would do would be is to do the test. If it is not something a temporary, she's going to get off it. If it is not something that she's going to be off in the next week or two, then I would just assume that's a new normal. Yes. And then do the test and then go essentially find out what can you do given where you are right now. Okay. And then see if the 
you know, certain types of prebiotics and certain type of probiotics and certain food, uh, fermented food that means you should be eating, kombu you know, drinking kombucha or kefir or yogurt. I mean, so essentially build lots of different types of things. They, you know, like my wife loved kombucha and it was her super food. And then she just went berserk on it. And next time she did the test, she said, avoid kombucha. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, mine's going to be kale for sure because I can eat kale as a superfood and I am ODing on kale because... I'm like, I can't eat so many other greens. It's so horrible. But yeah, I can see that. So my point is, it's amazing to see that we don't ask you, are you eating kale? We figured it out that, hey, my God, whatever she's doing, you got to stop that kale Yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, my goal with my mom would be whatever we're doing to fix everything. Yeah. Eventually, once we've got her in that place for about two months, I would take her off of it. And then see how she does. I would never advise you to take off drugs because somebody's going to chop my head off if yeah, I ever yeah. say that. I'm I'm her doctor, yeah. so yeah, I would be taking her off of it <laughs> uh, because I don't like putting her on it in the first place. I don't like. I've been working so hard through the last three years taking things off of her pill list. I'll ask her doctor. I'll be like, "Listen, do we still need this? She's got a crumb." How, how old is she? She's sixty-five. Okay, my mom. I went through the same thing. They they give them a pill and they never look back. She has now got 40 pills. She, and I say, Mom, why are you taking? He said, nobody told me to stop it. Yes. So I said, Mom, we're going to stop these things now. And we're going to go through what exactly you need. And I'm not going to give you anything else. Yeah. And she said, but you're not a doctor. And I said, Mom, I am your doctor now. Yeah. I'm going to take care of you. Right? Yeah. And the change she did in her diet had more impact on her than anything else. I mean, now her doctor is asking, I'm so glad I put you on these medicines because they're working now. And she refused, yep. and she doesn't have a heart to say, my, my son is stopped. <laughs> it's true. Well, if you think about it, you know, I took my mom to Mexico for alternative treatments in different stages of this, um, this brain cancer to build her immune system yeah. with high dose vitamin C's yeah. Yeah. and turmeric drips and yeah. all of these things, because I know we need to fortify her body for the fight. And also when you have cancer, it's really hard to take in as much food as you probably need nutrient wise. So you have to do it in these other ways with supplements and stuff Absolutely. like that. And so, I mean, vitamin D, I mean, you need, she's, real, yeah. I mean, you really need a lot of vitamin D and you know, good thing is vitamin D you can absorb, but the good thing is you, have, you know, I hope you know that you need to take that with lipids. You need to take that with uh, fat. Mm -hmm. So vitamin D can only be absorbed with fat. So you want to get the liquid vitamin D that has the lipids, the oil, and the fat built into it. So you actually will, uh, you can absorb a lot more. Ooh, I do have a liquid vitamin D. So I could look in the ingredients and see if it has lipids. Yeah, it does. It should. Fat. Ooh. The fat is really, really good for that. Ooh, I did not know that actually. Yeah. That's so important. Uh, Naveen, I... I am uh, so impressed with Viome, so impressed with the mission, and uh, so excited that we're friends and that I got to experience this and love it the way I have. I told you I have been singing it, you know, screaming it from the rooftops to everybody because it was my own research as well that brought me to the microbiome and how important the gut is. And, um, and I didn't know that you were the gift that day that was going to help me kind of put it all together and prevent me probably from a lot of really sad things that could have happened. So Maria, I'm just so thankful for your kindness, your friendship, and your genuine desire to help the humanity. And I think there could be a no better title for you show the better together. Thanks. We, we never alone cannot change the humanity, mm -hmm. but together we can change the way people live their lives. So I thank people like you who have made a mission to bring the people together to solve the problems instead of, you know, just enjoying our own good life and letting other people suffer. God bless you for what you do. Thank you. Ditto. And our last question we always ask everybody is, how are you getting better every day in your life? Staying intellectually curious. To me, the day you stop learning is the day you have died. So if you're not learning every day when you go to sleep, you ask yourself, what did I learn today? And if the answer is nothing, double your effort tomorrow because if you're not learning, you're going to die. So staying curious is the only way to live. As a matter of fact, I even say that our children, 
the best gift you give them is a gift of intellectual curiosity. It is not about taking them to the water or making them drink. It's about making them thirsty because if you can make them thirsty, they will find their own water and they will drink. And the best way to make them thirsty is to give them a gift of curiosity, is to always ask why this can't be done. So when someone says you can't live on the moon or Mars and say, what if that was possible? Imagine. So there are two ways I always done. The most powerful word in English language is word imagine. When I say imagine, your mind actually says, okay, tell me what. I'm willing to think about anything. So imagine a world and then you give them vividly. Imagine a world where no one is suffering. Your grandma doesn't have to uh, suffer from Alzheimer or Parkinson's or dementia. Imagine your friend who died didn't have to die. Imagine a world people are pricking their fingers to constantly for diabetes didn't have to happen. Imagine a world where people are in a wheelchair that didn't have to happen. Imagine a world with no chronic diseases. And that's where you say, I hope we can all together create that world. So always allow the kids to imagine. Allow ourselves to imagine. And I see dream, dream so big. Then when you tell someone what you can do, people think, you're crazy, that can never be done. And that craziness is what tells you that you are on the right track. The only other thing I would remind would be that be humble. The humility is the only way to know that you've actually been successful. Because if you still have iota of arrogance left in you, you're still trying to prove something to yourself or someone else. So dream really, really big, as big as people think you're crazy. Know that your success will never be measured by the amount of money you have in the bank. It will be measured by how many people's life you improved. And always stay humble. Never have to tell someone who you are and how much money you have. You simply live your life every day thinking, Someone because of you is better off today. And if every day you can make someone's lives better, you have lived an amazingly great, successful, significant life. I love it. Inspiring, educational. It makes me think of the movie It's a Wonderful Life. You've there seen you it, right? There, yes, it's of my course. favorite. Who hasn't seen that? Oh, it's my favorite movie. We watch it every, every yeah. Christmas. Yeah, and every it year, yeah. makes us cry every year. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, Maria. All right, guys. Hey, was he everything I said and more? I love Naveen. <laughs> I love he was everything him. you said and more, too. I was like <laughs> laughing when you were like, he's amazing. I go, I know. I know. I know. He's really passionate about what he does, which I think is so important. Yeah. I well, just... you can't be successful without it. It's funny, like even with the stuff I'm doing for this health show, it's like they were like, it's so different when you're working with somebody who's so passionate and knowledgeable in that arena. And so what did we learn? Well, it's ask the right questions and totally shift the way your mindset thinks about different things. Because I think we always are like, how am I going to take care of my family once they're sick? The question is, how do I prevent them from being sick? Mm -hmm. And doing things like the Viome is so great. And that's why I'm happy that we're going to be able to have some giveaways and really team up with Viome with better together yeah i think it's really interesting that the fda is so hesitant to let people try experimental stuff even if they're on their deathbed like that was kind of heartbreaking when he's just like mm -hmm. i've looked at this research i know that it could it might not work but everything is saying it'll work just inject him with this and let's see if it works yep. and they're like nope and he just has to watch his dad like that's messed up yeah yeah it was really really heartbreaking i um course i had my aha moment about my mom and she's going to be doing this test tonight so uh steph why don't you tell everybody about the amazing offer that naveen has given us yeah i'm actually so excited because viam and naveen they're the best they're giving our better together community ten dollars off the kits were originally 399 dollars and now they're online for 149 you can get them but our listeners and viewers get them for 139 which is an awesome deal all they have to do is go to all you have to do listening and viewing us at home is go to viome.com slash together so v-i-o-m-e dot com slash together and it's just really exciting i already know what i'm getting my parents for christmas <laughs> and you know steph you are right it is a great holiday gift. I love that you want to buy for your parents. Um, and I think what a great way 
to tell someone you love them by saying, I want you to be healthy. And for $149, you can buy your parents or your best friend or your sister or someone you love uh, this kit. (laughs) Tell them they got to (laughs) poop. Poop in a bowl to get better. Because when you shit together... You stay together you stay and you together. get better together. And you get better together. We remix. This is cre- Christmas edition remix. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> let's let's get better together, people. We are all as a community of Better Together listeners going to poop together. I've already pooped. I'm going to re-poop to retest. But uh, Susie Batiste would probably really love this. Oh, my gosh. You're so right. Yeah. Speaking of poop. Yeah. Wow. The creator of poopery. We could, we could have Viam and poopery partner. Wait, what if we could spray the poopery in the bowl we poop in so we don't have to smell it, but it wouldn't affect our results? We have to invent the <laughs> Viome gift box that includes the poopery, the Viome box, yeah. and a little golden little shit charm. That okay, is so a Christmas package if I That is a Christmas one. package. You're right. But imagine, like, the worst part of this is when you have to poop in the bowl thing and then you have to scoop it out and do all of that. I encourage you, if you have a very low tolerance for poop smell, to, like, wear a mask or, like, plug some Vicks up your nose or something. Um, <laughs> Like or like, you know, when you're sick, you put like Vicks on yes. your upper lips so that you can breathe in the menthol. Do something like that. I, I can handle poop. I love poop. I <laughs> love I don't. poop. No, I just like talking about poop. It's funny. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it's a really great gift, and I'm really grateful to Naveen for giving us this offer. And um, and I think it's a I think it's a great holiday gift. I always say give a gift that gives back. So at the holidays, I'm always suggesting to you know, give to the Sheldrick's Wildlife Trust and adopt an elephant because uh, you adopting that elephant, I think it's like $50 or $100 or something, and you, um, whoever you give it to, gets reports on the regular about their elephant. And so, Steph, you would have an elephant in Nairobi at the Sheldrick's Wildlife Trust, and anyone I've given them to has loved them, and they get all the reports from the keeper who sleeps with them at night because the keepers sleep with the orphan baby elephants in the shed in the hay together because they die of loneliness total like sidestep here but um (sighs) anything that gives back to a charitable organization is always what i want to do but this is like next level i think in another way because giving the gift of health is really important oh yeah and that's what we're all about so uh this was an awesome episode and we're gonna have naveen come back at some point to talk about uh how to be a good entrepreneur, how to take your vision to the next level, because he obviously has so much insight there. And thank you guys for joining us and for being a part of our community. Please continue to rate and comment and subscribe and share this with your friends. Everyone needs to be knowing this information. Uh, So please share an episode on social media so that the people that follow you will hear about it and learn about it and get better as well. Um, if you want to reach us by email, you can get us at better together with Maria at gmail.com. Of course, as I said earlier in the show, we launched a Patreon and we really want everyone to migrate over there, uh, support us and what we're doing. Um, and then also, you know, be in control of the content that you want. And so, uh, patreon.com backslash join backslash Maria Menounos. Um, I feel like I said Patreon backslash better together earlier. Which one they is it? They both go to the same place. Sweet. Okay, so I'm like, <laughs> I'm not wrong. If you want to find out more about Viome, you can go to Viome.com. You can keep up with Naveen Jane at NaveenJane.com. Also, he has a podcast called Moonshots with Naveen Jane, and that is also on Apple Podcasts. Follow us at Maria Menounos, at Naveen Jane CEO, at My Viome, V-I-O-M-E, at Steph Sabra, at Stephen Lemieux Photo, and remember... Be nice people, make good choices, and be present.